Welcome everybody to the Falcon One-Shot on the agenda. We have Age of Gladiators here today. This right here is a fun little title I stumbled upon not too long ago. What Age of Gladiators kind of entails itself as is you are thrusted into the role of initially, I wanted to say, a leader of a fighter's guild in ancient Roman times. But essentially, as I started playing more and more of it, I just realized that you're kind of just buying people to compete in Mortal Kombat for your own benefit when it comes to climbing the ranks in fame, legacy, and money as well. So if one of these fighters dies, it's kind of like, well, cool, you died. I have another person to train over here and get them out here going. However, if your fighters don't die, they will accumulate stats, skills, and also more fame. So that means you have more of a charismatic fighter that people want to come see, compete, and pay more money for. So as you could probably imagine, this is going to be a sim management game. I have a preloaded save over here going on that I want to basically do this video on. So let's go ahead and load into that really quickly here. Perfect. So, here is basically where you're going to be doing everything in this game. And this is also where I kind of think the game might suffer a little bit with the casual audience because there's not a lot of flash in the game, unfortunately. I personally don't mind it too much because I understand this is a sim management game, so I don't really expect, like, you know, crazy graphics and things of that nature. But for more of a casual audience, it might be a problem. But let's get into this really quickly. Let's go into the office over here and find out what's happening. This is going to be my character right here, uh, Strabo. I am, I am an ex-scout. When you first start up the game over here, you'll be able to choose what kind of um, portrait you want for your character and also what kind of history they had. You could have been a merchant in the past. You could have been a negotiator. You could have been a fighter. And all these will give you different type of abilities to start off the game with over here. I went with ex-scout because with an ex-scout, you have a good chance of being able to determine what the skills and abilities of each fighter that you're possibly recruiting are going to be conclusively so you don't have to really kind of guess if they're going to be a good fighter or not you can straight up see what their stats are and kind of you know hire them based on that but you're not going to do this alone mind you you're going to have to have a staff in terms of other scouts um, blacksmiths to keep your weapons running fine and armor as well doctors to treat illnesses and also injuries because obviously your fighters over here competing in mortal Kombat, they're going to be injured quite a bit often and you're also going to deal with other stuff here. But let's go into staff to show this off a bit more easier. So right now in the staff menu, these are the people that I have hired at the moment. When you hire them, it's going to cost you a bit of money. And also every single day, you have to give them money as well. That's going to be their salary for the day. And based on their abilities and their stats, they'll, give you, they'll cost more and more money as you go along over here. So for instance, right now as a scout, I have two people hired. I have Saturninus, who's an evaluation of 490 and a network of 380. And we have Celsus, which is an evaluation of 70 and a network of 355. Evaluation is really quite simple to kind of uh, realize what it is. It determines the accuracy of a scout's grading of potential fighters. And the network is how many potential fighters a scout will find each cycle. So they'll basically go out and look for fighters for you. And like every 15 days or so, they'll have like a new list. So in case you're a little bit short on fighters, or you want to hire more to get more people combating and training. Meanwhile, you'll be able to hire more based on their network status as well. Trainers are going to be easy to figure out as well. They're going to increase the XP gained by fighters through training and fighting as well. We have two of them at the moment. I only have one doctor at the moment, which is Strabo. Injuries, he'll be treating injuries based on this uh, ability right here. And sickness, he'll be, you know, your, your fighters will get sick like any other person will. So you got to keep that in mind as well. And we have a smitty, which will actually take care of our weapons and armor as we go along over here. Now, <clears throat> if you wanted to hire some more, perfectly possible. Let's go into hire staff over here, for instance. And these are the people available right now. As you can see, new staff available for hire in 15 days. So if you don't like what you see over here, you can kind of wait it out and see that other people show up with better stats and skills after the 15-day cycle. So these are my individuals right now. When it comes to hiring more fighters, let's go into recruit. And this is where your scouts come into play. They're going to be the ones going out there and finding fighters for you to kind of hire or not. So with Saturninus over here, speaking of which, we have already two fighters, and we're waiting for a third one, which I hired before this video, actually. So he's coming over here in three days. But if I wanted to hire a fourth guy, obviously it's going to cost me more money because fighters do cost more money to kind of um, keep around your base and keep them happy. If I wanted to hire a fourth one, for instance, let's see, nobody over here really stands down at the moment. They all have age, strength, stamina, agility, reflexes, dexterity, and intelligence, and their health as well. I do believe um, fighters will age over time. So something like age is kind of really important in that regard, where you kind of want to make sure you can have somebody, especially if you're training somebody up over the long. You see, this guy's over, over the hill. He's at 43 years old. 19, he's developing still. So you want to make sure you want to have a price fighter, assuming you keep him alive, for the long haul over here. 
So I think for now, I don't want to hire anybody over this guy. Let's say scout number two. Do you have anything for me? Hmm. Ahala isn't too bad. Strength at a B, stamina at an A, agility is a D, B minus. This isn't too bad right here. Not too bad at all. He's only 19 years old too, so he's going to definitely develop a lot better. So let's hire this guy as well. Why not? Alrighty. Let's go into our stable. Here are my fighters. Right now I have two individuals already. They have a record of two and zero. They normally die whenever they lose, so I'm not sure you'll ever see a one over here, but, you know, maybe sometimes they don't die. I'm not sure, but we have a record of two and zero with both of them over here. Their salary per day is two or three. You can increase this yourself to actually keep their morale higher as well. So if they're looking pretty down and out, you could, you know, pay them more money and they'll be like, oh, hey, I love you. I want to do better in fights. And there you go. Now, let's go ahead and view these guys, though. We have Silo and Yuba, right? This is going to be Silo right here. This will be indicating all of his stats. He's going to be close to leveling up. At 2,000, he'll pick up level 2. And when he does that, you'll be able to go into expertise and then accumulate some stats over here on weapon training, armor training, so on and so forth. And also special talents for fights. Now, their charisma is going to be kind of important in terms of putting asses in the seats. You know, the more charismatic of a fighter you have, the more people want to see him. Whether to lose or win, doesn't really matter. It's kind of like Conor McGregor when you think about it, right? The guy's a great fighter, but he's also really charismatic, so people are always packing the stadiums to see Conor McGregor kick somebody's ass, right? So that's going to be that. Greed is going to be how much money they want for their salary, and also how much money they want from the purse that you're going to be winning from a fight, assuming they succeed. So the more greed they have, the more money they want from your winnings whenever you do win a match over here, and the morale is happy. All righty, cool. Let's go into our office. In our office, we'll get some mail little updates on occasion telling us what's happening over here. So, for instance, right now on March 15, which is yesterday, we're on the 16th today, sponsorship. Perhaps you would be interested in sponsoring the games. A generous financial contribution would increase the frequency of scheduled fights in the following month. Check your calendar and do let us know. So, with this right here, if you go to our calendar, you'll notice that these are our upcoming fights right now. As you can see, 17, 18, 19, 20, no fights over here scheduled for us. You'll get more scheduled when you have like a higher reputation. Um, but if I wanted to go ahead and put some money in here, I could go ahead and do 20000 And then on April, or I should say Apralis, or Apralis, I guess, um, you'll have a 40% more chance to be scheduled for fights. And if you go up to 40, it'll be 50%, so on and so forth. But for now, I think we're fine with this one here. I don't think we're going to probably even get to April in this video. And that's about it. Let's see. We have our map over here. So we start off in Utica. Essentially, what we want to do is just climb the ranks so we get all the way up to Rome, where the big boys play. Bosses. These are the guys we're fighting here in um, Vindictus or whatever the hell we're at right now. Vinctus. Uh, these are the bosses, and they also have fighters themselves. This guy is the guy I've been fighting for the most part. And since I've won four fights, he's been down from 11 fighters down to seven. So he's over here getting his ass kicked by me, which is fine. I haven't messed around with this guy or this guy because their average level of fighters are four. We're still in level one, so it's definitely a leveling progress over here. And then rankings will tell you what's going on with your characters and whatnot. Let's go into the calendar. And let's over here end our turn because we just won our fight today. So let's see what happened here. You spent 18,000. Oof, my God, that's a lot of money. But that's because we um, did hire a few individuals right now as well. Um, so, Silo, he earned 31 training experience, he's tired for one more day, so when they're tired, and you send them into a fight, their stats will be diminished as well, so you definitely want to send somebody into a fight who's re well rested, but he also gained morale because we did win our fight, Yuba got 50 for training experience, he's going to be tired for 9 days, I think Yuba was the last guy I used for the last fight, that's why he's going to be tired for 9 days, and then we have Buteo, and Ahala in transit still, so there you go. Nothing happening today, so we'll go ahead and what we can do is just keep this over here in mail to see what's happening. You're stable. If you're interested in keeping your fighters happy, you will eventually want to upgrade food. Oh, there we go. Here's the food upgrade thing that we talked about. If you're interested in keeping your fighters happy, you will eventually want to upgrade food, shelter, and sleeping conditions. All these things will increase their morale and training speed. However, if you do not wish to pander to their every whim, you can opt to turn your stable into a prison instead. With enough security upgrades, your stable will be impossible to escape from. Your fighters will hate you for it, though. <laughs> oh my god, that's really cool. I, as you can probably imagine, I've never gotten to this point because I kept on getting my ass kicked early on. This is my first really decent run here. So that's really interesting. Okay. So we go over here to stable. We can upgrade now. Aha. Uh -huh. So it'll cost us initially, for instance, if we want to get more food. Right now they're eating slop and they're sleeping in dirt. Aha, uh -huh. so the more you upgrade this, that'll go up, and then you could also just turn this into a prison and <laughs> keep them from escaping. That's actually pretty rad. Okay, that definitely adds more depth into the game. I like that. Uh, let's go into end turn. And now we have Buteo and Ahala 
training as well. Let's go into the stables and let's find out about Buteo here. Buteo, your weapon specialty is going to be a Lancia. Okay. Lancia, huh? 81. You already have one equipped. 81 is going to be the damage for that one. It's in 100% condition as well. Let's see, how is everybody else doing? This guy is the other dude. He's got no weapon, however. He also special specializes in the Lancia as well. You have Glady as a 54. 80 condition. 80 condition, 112 hostile. Let's see if we could find some better weapons for these. So how about a better Gladius? Uh, I think the hostile will stick with that one. But we'll go with a better Gladius if we could find one. And then maybe two Lancias. Let's go into Staff or Market. Gladius, here we go. 101 damage. We'll go ahead and purchase this one here. And we said a Hosta as well, right? Lancia. Two Lancias, possibly. As long as one's over 81, we'll pick it up. Yeah, your Hosta's just fine. <laughs> your Hosta is just fine. Words I never thought I'd ever utter in my life here. Lancia 52. Alright, this one's pretty shitty, but it's the only one available for the Fort Fighter that we have. So I'll go ahead and purchase this one as well. Let's go back into our stable, and it's going to be for Ahala if I'm right. So Ahala, I got a Lancia for you right here. And then we have a Gladius for Homeboy over here. Oh, it's going to be a really good boost for Silo. Very, very good boost. Alrighty. Yuba's going to be tired here for five more days. So here's our fight. Fight scheduled, average hype. We will definitely be entering this one. No new mail. All right, let's go over here and let's enter this fight over on this side. The day has come. A new battle is upon us. The attendance for this match is 4,607. And again, this will be based on the hype coming in for the fight. So the more charismatic dudes you have, the more people will try to come over here and check it out. And also bend more money on the fight. So right now, the purse at the moment is going to be 22,160. I get to choose a boss fight over here. We'll definitely continue kicking Agricola's ass, though, so I'm going to choose him. So let's see here what we have. I think we have to go with Silo for this one. I'll wait for my new guys over here to train a bit more. Or technically, I could just take them out for a spin. If they die, it's not a big issue because they're new. I haven't really invested too much time in them just yet. You know what? Let's try out a new guy. And if we lose, well, we lose. Too bad. Ahala, I'll leave it up to you, buddy. He's in healthy condition. Let's select him. So once you commit to this, you can't go back anymore. So at the moment, we have a fight against Cornetus. As you can see, the odds are in my favor, 4 to 1, so people are definitely under the impression I'm going to just destroy this guy, and it's possibly true. That's possibly true. Now, over here is how much of the money that I'm going to win I'm going to share with the fighter fighting. So if I go ahead and really offer 4,000, his morale will decrease by 10 per uh, by negative 10, which is something we kind of don't want happening. So I will go ahead and do 7,000 and increase his morale by 5 at least. And that's fine. Now, how much money do I want to place on the side of my own winnings that I have here stored up? Well... If we have a 4 to 1 odd, I feel we should be fine, so I'm going to go ahead and place it all in the bank here, and we'll continue. Introducing the gladiators for this fight, Ahala, age 19, Cornetus, age 39. We definitely trump him in strength, stamina, he's got better agility, we have more reflexes, we are dexterity, and oh my god, this is going to get wrecked. We're going to destroy this man. So let's get into the fight here really quickly, and hold up. So here is where you'd probably think that after you choose your fight to go into like some sort of like, you know, screen where you see these guys, you know, fight each other to the dead. It would be kind of cool, I will admit, but there's nothing like that over here. You could just go ahead and just watch this through text, which is where I think the game sometimes might not be too catering to the casual audience. I might want to see some actual, you know, combatant going on, batching each other's heads in. But, you know, I'm okay with this, honestly. And you could speed this up, and some of these fights are going to last for a while, depending on who you're fighting with. So you could go ahead and do the two times speed, one times speed, and just slow it down completely. Or, we already won this fight. Uh, we could just skip it completely to the end if you don't want to stick around over here and wait for everything to go down, which is, you know, also a possibility. Let's go into a review. If we go into a review, we could see what happened here. We actually killed this guy in the seventh turn. So we just, um, hid, hid, missed a few times, and then a the final hit for the kill. He's done, Ski. A magnificently fought match. We have a winner. We have 14,000 from the purse. We also got 2,000 from our side bets over here. The crowd is bloodthirsty. The losing fighter is executed. So, this is what I meant about fights. You don't, I guess, kill them yourself. But some, but I guess you could keep them around if they don't get executed after the fight if the crowd isn't bloodthirsty. I'm not sure what the term is that. Maybe your fame or charisma. But for this guy, I guess he wasn't charismatic enough and he got dealt with. There you go. He's dead. We also got 15 more fame. He got 338 experience, and he's now going to be fatigued here for a while. Let's go back to our office. Any mail? We don't have this guy over here talking shit. Agricola, I'm over here going through your fighters like hotcakes, my friend. Alrighty. 
end our turn over here. And let's see. That's what happened here for today. Gain morale. Everybody, whenever you win a fight, will gain morale from that. So there is that. And we have another fight coming up here. Let's go to that one. I was hoping we could trigger some side quests. There's another option in the game where side quests would trigger up. Where, where essentially you have a chance to go do a side mission. It's all text-based, mind you. But it'll be something like, you know, we found some ruins. Could you want to come and check it out? There's money in it for you. Do you want to raid another boss's um, castle and take money from them? Do you want to raid the palace? You know, there's a bunch of different little quests that'll pop up. And the success on those are based on your fighters. If you send more people out there, the better chance you have of success. But if it fails, they'll either be injured or sometimes even killed. So you kind of have to weigh your options over here. If you're really in a dire need for money, you might want to go along with it. But I was hoping we'd have one pop up, but it's not really happening right now. Come on. Come on, this is a preview video. I'd like to show that off. No? Not happening. The day has come. A new battle is upon us. 4,184, and the purse is 19,000. We definitely want to continue fighting Agricola over here. So I'm going to choose him. I'm going to go with Silo, who's apparently now... Leading the ranks in terms of my favorite fighter, I'm going to say. So he's going to be my prize fighter, assuming we, can, we keep him alive for a long time here. So I'll select him. The odds are in my favor 6 to 1. <laughs> but he's got a high level of greed, meaning I have to pay this guy a lot of money. So I normally go with the 5 morale increase. I'm not sure if there's going to be some sort of min-maxing um, equation with this. There probably is, but you know, that's what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to spend 23,000 for the 6 to 1 odds against Hyrule Wolf. So we have more strength. Oh, this guy actually lost the fight and didn't get killed, so he might be a little bit charismatic himself. Uh, we have a ton more health, more dexterity. Oh, this is going to be our fight. No problem. And for the sake of this video, we'll just go ahead and skip into the end here. Actually, we might just kill him already. Oh yeah, he's almost down. 16. He's dead. Did he even touch us? I think he hit us once. Yeah, I think we got hit once, but there you go. And he's dead. He got executed this time around. I guess I'm too charismatic for his liking here. We got 10,000 from the purse, and almost 4,000 from side bets over here alone. And Silo level up to level 2. Let's go check this out really quickly, because this is new for me as well. So if we come over here, Expertise, we have now an available point over here. I definitely want to get some armor, so let's go with this one. And now we could actually equip this man with some hide armor. So if we go over to the market, armor, I'm going to pick this one up for 500. Stable, Silo, and armor. Equip it. And now he'll be able to be able to reduce some damage coming in and more importantly as well his stats won't drop because of it and we also have five skill points over here to toss around i'm gonna go into i think more strength could be really useful on this guy just to kill these people even faster and there you go Alrighty, guys this is age of uh, gladiators for you really fun game if you could definitely you know get around the kind of simplistic mechanics about it but I really find it really fun, and I'm going to probably keep playing it on my own accord over here because it's a really fun game in that regard. I want to see what happens when you get to Rome and, you know, get a prize fighter over here that never loses and whatnot. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, though. If you enjoyed the game, description below should have all the information about it if you want to check it out on your own accord. I will catch you next time.